I'm like, you know about the movie The Secret Shane? He's like, that's my favorite movie. So if you know, then why are you sneaking? He's like, I sit and watch this movie every night, me and my girlfriend. We're manifesting all the time. I'm like, you sure are. <laughs> you sure are. You're manifesting all the time. And so why do I tell this story? One, uh, our words, it's a, it's a little example of our words and our thoughts are power. What we speak and what we say is what we create. It's what we're looking for. It's a tuning fork, right? It's like, if you see a tuning fork and you catch other vibrations, what you think and what you speak is what, is what you create in your life. It's what, it's what hits you. The most important reason why I share that story is because we all have a little shame in us. We all know the right answers, right? We all have read the books. We all seen the seminars, we've all seen speakers like myself stand up here, and there's gonna be things that I'm gonna share, I'm gonna speak with today, and you're like, I know that. Yeah, I know, I know. But there's a big difference between knowing and doing. And so as you're going through this, catch yourself. Do you say not too bad when people ask you how you're doing? Catch that. What kind of words are you speaking out loud? Where are your thought process and mindset? And so guess what? This is science. It's more than outside of the movie The Secret. I watched the movie The Secret, and I used to tell people about The Secret because I believed in it so much, and people would be like, that's so woo-woo, right? But guess what? Oops, gotta turn my remote up. In our brains, in our, in our, in our human, human physiology, we have a filter. Because guess what? There are so many things going on. Even right now in this room, I hear a ship bag going, right? Like, I can hear that. Like, what else is going on in the room? There's too many things going on in the room. And so what our minds do is we delete, we distort, and we generalize information. We can't possibly process it all. And we have a filter in our brains called the reticular activating system. Anybody ever heard of that term? I feel like the smartest person in the room whenever I say <laughs> reticular activation system. It's like, everybody stops, nobody knows what it is, and I sound like I'm a scientist. This is actually a filter in our brains that helps us decide what is important to us. Has anybody ever bought a car and you've never seen that car on the road before? You had a friend that bought a car and all of a sudden now you see that car everywhere. You never saw it before. When I bought my first Harley, I thought that I lived in a town where nobody rode Harleys. I bought a Harley and I saw so many Harleys on the road, you know, like they were everywhere. I'm like, now I live in a biker town. How did that happen? Did they buy bikes because I bought a bike? No, those bikes were always, they always existed. They were always there. There was no signal. My, my brain didn't say, Jason, this is important to you. When I got a bike, my brain, my, my, my mind, that was my filter. Now I'm seeing it, now it's present because now I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about that car, I'm thinking about that bike, right? So how does this apply to sales? How does it apply to leadership? How does it apply to your goals? Well, are your goals possible? You know, when, when uh, is, is the economy good right now? Um, are people, do people wanna hear from you? Because these are wide sweeping statements that I hear all the time from the clients that I work with. Like, oh, well, you know, um, we're going into a recession, so people aren't buying right now. If I believe that, do I have a harder time selling? I'm probably not even gonna pick the phone up, right? Because I believe that nobody's buying. And when somebody gives me an objection, they say they don't have any money, or they give me the objection over the recession, I found the proof to support my belief. And that falls right into my filter. How do I change that? Who is buying right now? Asking powerful questions. You can flip that around by broad sweeping statements. Nobody cares. Have you ever found yourself saying that? Nobody cares. I've had clients in my office who are like, nobody cares. Really, nobody cares? Does your mom care? Well, yeah, you know what I mean. But like, nobody cares? Like, do I not care? Let's start focusing it out. There are people that care, right? There are certainly people that probably don't care. But if I can start focusing and asking that question, who does care? Who does have the knowledge? Who's done this before? Who could I ask? Right now, all of a sudden, all the world starts opening up. I had a client that came to me and she told me her biggest hindrance in being an entrepreneur and why she wasn't successful is because she's not creative. She's a very logical thinking person. She's very black and white. She's very numbers oriented. And so she told me, I have no creativity. Now, mind you, when I met this lady, I met her in a crowded, in a crowded networking event. It was a super loud event. And in that, in that time, I could barely hear what she was saying, but she started telling me a story about what she did. And it was so emotional, it made me cry. I brought, it brought tears to my eyes. And I invited her on my podcast, Coffee and Grit, because I wanted her to share that story. And our relationship has been a relationship where I've viewed her as a very creative person. And she tells me I have no creativity. And so I share how, what I see in her, and I'm like, you said you have no creativity. My homework for you 
let's flex that muscle, let's, let's start working our reticular activating system. Think of all the ways in the next week of, of how you're creative, creative. She came back to me the next week, alphabetical order because she's logic brain first, right? Had a list, three pages long of all the ways that she's creative. Guess what? If you're a problem solver, you're creative. You can sit here and think you're not artsy, but if you're solving problems for people, that takes problem solving skills, right? But the more, like, it's, it's now all of a sudden, every conversation we had over the next four months of our sessions, she caught herself, oh, there's another way that I'm creative. I, it tuned in her brain, and now she was looking for the ways that she was creative, right? Versus saying, I'm not creative. We can get very, as humans, it's, a natural, it's, it's natural for us to think of all the ways that we're not all the ways that we fail, all the ways that we come up short. And then we think we gotta be humble. We can't say the way we're, we're, what we're good at. No, let's focus on what we're good at, right? Let's do more of that. And let's, let's be honest with ourselves and be like, I'm a really good listener. I'm really good at serving people and listening and helping them get, the, get what they need to hit their vision, right? If I know that, like I can keep honing that and make it my difference. This is, if you think about this, think this is our human equivalent to if you're out shopping for a pair of shoes and all of a sudden those pair of shoes pop up on every social media page that you hop up on, right? That's the easiest way to think about the reticular activating system. It's our human equivalent. It's our, it's our human equivalent, our human filter. It's our, it's our algorithm, right, that tells us what's important. Shane, that example earlier, had a hard life. And so his, his, his mind was thinking negative. He was always looking for the negative outcome. He could have been handed a million dollars and he would have found a way that it would have been bad. I had to pay taxes on that, right? That's horrible, right? And this is true. These are conversations that we had. Everything was negative. If you think about this, if you ever had a group of friends where you're in a conversation and then you and the friend leave and that friend was so offended by that way that person said and there was nothing offensive that they said, they took it personal because that was what their thoughts were in, right? You can move those. We're humans and that's the greatest gift that we have is that we're able to reposition and move. How does that help happen in sales? How does that help in sales? You can boil down to the niches. Who do you really serve, right? We talk about riches and the niches. Why? Because if I go try to market to everybody that needs sales coaching, that's hard. Like everybody needs sales coaching. I've worked with so many companies and so many solopreneurs, everybody needs coaching. Can I help everybody? No. So I've got to boil down and know specifically who I, who, what lights me up to work with because then we'll get results, right? I, um, my mom, moms know that, know, know the most, right? My mom, uh, I, I give my mom a lot of credit for any success that I've had. But I could, I, for the longest time, I didn't really know what it was that she did. Um, my, my brother, my sister, myself, we've all had success to certain degrees in what we've done. And as I was like, wondering, what, what is it that my mom did? And a few months ago, I was having this conversation with my mom and I remembered. The biggest thing for me is my curiosity. And what developed my curiosity was that I constantly disappointed my mom. I disappointed my mom because my mom is the nosiest, self-admittedly person on the face of this earth. She has to know what's going on with everybody. She's the gossip, right? And that's just her, like she, every time I talk to her, she catches me up with everything that's going on with the neighbors and the family. And did you hear about this? And did you hear about this? Well, being an elementary school kid, I'd come home and I'd be like, Jimmy did this and then did this and then this happened. And she's like, and then what happened? I'm like, I don't know. And then what happened? And then did he do this? And then what happened? And she asked me all these questions and I didn't know, I just knew the first two things. And she's like, you gotta be more nosy. If you're gonna come home and tell me a story, you gotta know more info. <laughs> and so it created this lifelong habit in me that I just went out and I just would ask people questions. They'd start telling me a story and I'd be like, tell me more, you know, like, let me know some more of that stuff. And so that's the biggest secret, no matter what you're doing in business, we're dealing with people. And guess what, no matter what you're doing in business, you're not the most important person in the room. And that's hard, it's a hard ego thing. I found myself struggling when I first started business because I needed to make money. And I was going out there, it's like, how do I make money? And I was thinking so much about myself that I wasn't thinking about the most important people, the people that I wanted to help make money. And as soon as I started thinking about them, as soon as I started, when I had my meetings, not thinking about, oh man, I hope they, I hope they cut me a check, <laughs> versus how can I serve them, right? What's going on in their life? What's preventing them from hitting their goals? Am I the person to, to help them, right? Am I the person to serve them? And so what I had to do and adjust in my, early on in my business is slowing that down and understanding 
The biggest difference in, the biggest difference maker to be the difference in, in business period is to have that curiosity. God gave us two ears and one mouth. That's for a reason. A lot of times in sales, we think the person that has all the answers is the best. The person that says the slickest words. If I had a dollar for every time told me, hey, I got this objection, what magical word would you say? There's no magical word. If someone texts me, hey, I got this objection, how do you overcome it? I can't text you an answer for that. I've got to know more information. I've got to ask you questions. What was going on in the conversation? What was going on in the dialogue? Why they want to do this in the first place? What was, I need to know information to help you overcome that. And if you don't have that information, if you're coming to me and you don't know why in the world they want to do that, do you, uh, buy your product, you're done. All we can do now is learn. Because it's hard to go back and show them that you care and that you want to do it the right way and that you want to know what's going on in their life. If you don't know what's going on in their life and their business, how can you solve their problem? The other day I went to a networking event and a lady I knew there asked me, um, hey, how do you sell something that's too good to be true? And I was like, how do you know it's too good to be true? And she was like, because when they tell them, when I, when I get to the point that seems to be good, too good to be true, they make a body, they, they always make a face or their body gets tight or something happens. And I'm like, did you ask them what's going on? No. A lot of times we assume our brains are excellent servants, terrible masters. And so when there's an answer out there and we're wondering what that answer is, we start assuming it's too, it costs too much or, um, or it must be too good to be true, right? Instead, I said, lean into that. Ask them. You see it going on. Julian, what's going on? I see, what, what are you thinking? And now they get to tell you what's going on versus me making any kind of assumption and now I'm changing my price because it must be too high, right? Have we done that before? Anybody in the room? I'm changing my price because they made a face. I'm making all these assumptions versus just asking them. Now, I use this comparison because how many sales coaches would have just gave them one answer, one word, top five ways to overcome an objection? If you're doing it right, you don't know unless you know that person and what's going on in the situation. Be curious. Instead of talking about your products, your services, surviving, keeping the job, ask them who are they, what are they doing, why, challenges. I could sit and have a conversation for you with, with you for an hour just asking, saying, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. And guess what? When you leave a conversation, when they're, with the other person's doing most of the talking, you leave and they feel like you're the most, the best conversationalist they've ever talked to. Because somebody listened. And I talk about being the difference because this will make you different. Those people aren't listening. Lastly, we can talk about everything. We can talk about uh, other people having that curiosity. We can talk about changing our thoughts. At the end of the day, in order to hit your goals, you have to take responsibility for yourself. Nobody else is gonna do it, right? And that's what everybody's here, everybody's taking respons responsibility for themselves. For me, and I'll talk about what eat faces means, it was a mentality. Things happen, life happens, COVID happened, right? Recession could happen. All these things can happen. What are we going to do in spite of those things? And so back in 2016, I was a sales director for a company. And one of my goals for the length of that company was to maybe be franchisee of the year. We were, um, <clears throat> we were based out of uh, Michigan. And no, this company, nobody, out of, nobody out of New England had ever won franchisee of the year in this company. And so we won franchisee of the year. It was so awesome. I had my whole leadership team with me. We were out in Chicago. And we were out in Chicago and the whole franchise leadership, the president, the CEO, the uh, other owners of the franchise were with us just hanging out, buying us drinks and all kinds of stuff. And I had this one guy named Eric out from New England that, was, that, that, that kind of like bore himself to me. And he started telling me all the reasons why he wasn't us, why he wasn't winning, why he was a failure. He was like, the franchise, they sucked. They, they told me, you know, they told me they're going to make me a successful business owner, but then they haven't helped me do anything. And I've just kind of had to try to figure out myself. And the, the carrier, Verizon, they suck. They only, they only care about you if you're hitting numbers. And if you're not hitting numbers, then they're not going to give you the support you need. And my employees, they steal from me, and it was just excuse after excuse after excuse. And finally, I was like, Eric, can't take this anymore. Listen, man. You gotta take responsibility for yourself. I'm not saying what you had, I'm not saying what you're talking about isn't valid. I came in in the recession, our company was, was millions of dollars in debt, and the franchise said, we're gonna make you successful. We're gonna give you all the tools and the resources you need. But guess what, I didn't sit there and wait for the franchise to give me the tools and the resources. I know if we're gonna be successful, if we're gonna get out of our own mess, we gotta take our own responsibility. And so I started working, and we started developing our people, because guess what? I'm a face-eating lion, and at the end of the day, if I don't eat, if my people don't eat, it's my own damn fault. It's not the franchise's fault, it's not the agent's fault, it's not anybody else's, it's not COVID's fault, it's not anybody else's fault. I've got to take personal responsibility for my own self. And guess what, Verizon, you know what, they only care about you if you hit numbers. 
but they don't make it hard. They tell you exactly what they want you to hit. And so I went out and I saw the numbers they wanted you to hit. And I trained my team. This is how you hit them. This is how we take care of people. And this is how we sell these products. And so when we hit those numbers, when we hit those numbers, not only did Verizon give us all the support that we needed right out of the gates to give us whatever we needed, but they also give me cash incentives they don't give you. How do you like that? That sucks, doesn't it? For you, not for me, but anybody can do it. I'm not special. I just realized that no boat is coming for me. No magical rescuer is gonna care more than I do. No one's gonna care about my people more than I do. And so again, we can sit and talk about all the things that are, but we gotta make the choice. Are we gonna hit our goals or are we not? And what do we gotta do to hit those goals? Is it something that we don't wanna do? It might be. We might have to make a phone call to somebody that we don't, that, that hurts, right? But it's taking the action. We can read about it, we can talk about it, you can sit and listen to me talk about it till I'm blue in the face. But if you don't make, take that step and do it, you're never gonna achieve it. And so, eat faces, I, I probably would have died. But luckily, it was like, I'm in this loud bar in Chicago, the music stopped, it was like, <clears throat> record. My whole leadership team heard me going off on this guy and it became the rallying cry for our whole company for the next year. We ended up having a better year the next year. And then when I started my own business, they got me this really cool book and they talked about what that transformation was like through their mindset, through sales, how they started seeing serving people at a different level. I said, at the end of the day, we're face eating lions because we got to work with you and that was one of the coolest moments. So I carried it over and I hope you enjoyed that story. It's true though, go out and, and be that difference. And so what's the next step? I'm everywhere. Uh, I, as, as mentioned, I do have a best-selling book. I, uh, I constantly forget I did do that last year. That was like a really cool thing off my bucket, bucket list. Uh, I do have a podcast called Coffee and Grit. Uh, this is serving professionals and entrepreneurs. So right up your, right up your alley, there are uh, Jimmy Pulaski, uh, you'll recognize, is a, is a, yeah, with a guest on Coffee and Grit. Do I have anybody else here? No. Wow. Someday. Someday. Natalie keeps putting you off. Uh, whatever. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Coffee and Grit, uh, my website, www.roar.consulting, and you can find me on LinkedIn. So, wow, just be the difference, everybody.